Hello everybody, welcome back into the kitchen. Um, well, today I guess is number four. Those of you who follow my main channel, which I suspect is most of you, will be uh, fully aware that RevToast TV has challenged me to a 30 and 30. Today, like I say, I think is number four. And I found this neat little recipe for like banana-based granola bars. Although looking at the recipe, the bananas are just kind of this little tiny portion of it. But anyway, I've got some bananas that need to be used up, cooked with, you know what I'm saying? So, let's take a quick look at the recipe. Those of you who want to pause and write this down might want to pause now, get ready for that. And we'll take a look at what this is supposed to look like when I'm done, but I'm not holding my breath. Okay, here we go. So I found this in the Company's Coming Kids Cook book. And basically, that is the goal. However, right off the hop, I've got a couple of problems says we need a 9 by 13 inch oblong baking pan. The closest thing I have that will fit in the toaster oven is a 9 inch round ceramic pan. So, yeah, like I say, I'm not holding my breath that that's going to be the outcome. But, I am going to make it because I want to find out how it tastes. For those of you who weren't necessarily able to write that down in the uh, amount of time that you had it paused for or that I left it up for, this we need, got the book right here, Quick cooking rolled oats, long thread coconut, raisins, sunflower seeds, and peanuts. I don't have sunflower seeds or peanuts, so I'm just going to have to fake ingredients for those. I also need margarine, corn syrup, liquid honey, large egg, vanilla flavoring, and of course, that mashed banana that started this whole kerfuffle. So, alright. As always, I have my faithful assistant with me here, making sure I trip over everything I do. So this is supposed to start off with three cups of quick cooking oats, not instant, so three cups. Next I'm supposed to add in a cup of long thread coconut. I have sweetened coconut flakes, so that's what I'm using. We add one cup of raisins to this. Next is supposed to be a half a cup of sunflower seeds, but I don't have those unless I go ripping through all the bird food and I'm just not prepared to do that. So what I put in here instead is half a cup of pecans. Already going off the recipe, but it's just a guide. It's just a guide. And then our last ingredient here is supposed to be a half a cup of peanuts, which I don't have. So, half a cup of walnuts. Walnuts, pecans, raisins. Could be good. We'll see. And I guess now that I've got these all in the one large mixing bowl, I'm just supposed to combine it with my mixing spoon, which I suspect will go better with two hands. And I gotta say, at this point, I'm supposed to set this aside, start working in the next bowl. But I could almost stop here and call this a breakfast cereal mix. I'm not gonna, but it's tempting. So into this next bowl, we start with our half a cup of margarine. Then I'm going to add the corn syrup, the liquid honey, the large egg, and the vanilla flavoring. So we've got our third tablespoon of corn syrup going in here. That's going to take a minute or two. Going to need to scrape that out. Then I guess I need to find the liquid honey. And that makes our third tablespoon of liquid honey. Egg should be easy enough to find. I'm pretty sure I know where the vanilla is. No way I'm going to be able to crack the egg and hold the camera at the same time, so we'll get back after both of those are in there. One egg and one teaspoon of vanilla, though, just so we don't miss those measurements. Then apparently I'm supposed to use my electric mixer and beat this until it's light and fluffy. So we'll get back after that. See how that works out. I was just reading over the directions. Apparently I'm supposed to be beating the banana in at this point as well. I figured I would make mention that I am now beating the banana in as well. Problems with learning as you go, eh? And then I guess once this is all mixed up, we're supposed to mix it into our dry stuff here. The oats, the raisins, the, all of those goodies. So much for my breakfast cereal. You just scrape that out. It doesn't look terribly attractive. But we'll see how the finished product is, right? It's about where you get at the end, not where you are along the way. Right? Right? Alright, so, again, this will work better with two hands, but, you know, for the purpose of the video, I'm mixing, I'm mixing, I'm cutting the camera so I can mix it properly. So, because I'm supposed to be putting this into a significantly larger pan, it of course doesn't all fit for me, but I'm supposed to put it in there and then press it down by hand, make sure it's all nice and packed. I guess I might do a second batch in one of the mini loaf pans or something later, we'll see how this works out. Make sure my toaster oven is set to 325 and nicely preheated. 
tell you what I really got to do is get around to fixing the actual oven one of these days. If anybody is into appliance repair and knows how to replace the thermostat in one of these ovens, I could really use that information. Maybe uh, you know, direct me to a good video or something. Anyway, this seems to be fairly firmly packed down in there. And now it's supposed to bake for 50 minutes until firm and golden brown. So, into the toaster oven you go. And in you go. Center rack, 325. Time to set the timer. And the countdown begins. It's noon. All right, so here we are. It has been 50 minutes. That looks pretty golden brown to me. Let's pull it out and uh, see what we can see. Well, right off the hop, the first thing I see here is that I probably should have cut those raisins. They seem to have swelled up a fair bit with whatever moisture was in there. But it looks nice and golden brown. It's supposed to be till firm and golden brown. I'd say that's firm. It's not hard, but it's firm. Starting to smell like uh, it's done, though. You know that odor that oats take. Maybe you don't, but if you get to this point, you'll know it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let this cool for a little bit. And then uh, we'll see if we can take it out of here and maybe put it on a proper wire rack to uh, cool a little better and find out if this sucker cuts into bars or crumbles into cereal. Well, here we are. It's cooled for about an hour. I put it on the rack. I flipped it off the rack. It's on the plate. Tried cutting it. It seemed to crumble you know, a little bit, but for the most part, we've got a basically bar consistency going on here. I guess it's time to taste it. Well, here we are. This is the end result of today's cooking adventure. It seems to be dropping oats as I go, so I'd better hurry up here. Well, that was still a little bit moist in the middle and uh, a bit of a commitment to chew, but anytime you've got coconut flakes in there, you're going to be chewing for a minute or three. All in all, I'd say that worked out fairly well. Maybe a little bit more moist in the middle than it should have been, so perhaps I should have cooked it a little bit longer. But it said when it's, you know, kind of firm and golden brown on top, so I took it out when I did. It's a little bit crumbly, but all in all, a pretty good treat. If you want to give it a go, please, by all means, let me know in the comments how it works out for you. And, uh, yeah. I will see you guys next time. This has been video number four. Number five should be tomorrow on the Outdoor Channel. Keep watching. All right.